My name is Michelle Estep, and I'm Pastoral Care Associate here at Creekside. I want to welcome you to another episode of Looking Up. You know, my husband Earl and I have been recently introducing the Pilgrim's Progress to some of our grandkids. This classic religious allegory written by John Bunyan in 1678 is a symbolic vision of the good man's pilgrimage through life. The protagonist in this story is Christian Pilgrim who lives in the city of destruction and becomes weighed down by what he reads in a book he found called The Book. You see, he read that he and his family and all of his neighbors were facing judgment. This weight becomes a literal burden on his back, which he himself can't remove. He longs to leave everything and go to the celestial city to serve the king, but his wife and children think he's crazy to want to leave their comfortable life. As much as this pains him, still, he must follow after the truth that he has discovered in that book. As we try to creatively teach God's truth to our grandkids through each experience in Christian Pilgrim's journey, we hope to focus on the importance of staying on the path that leads to the light. In fact, in the story, a man named Evangelist finds Christian in his distress and explains that there is a path that leads to the celestial city through a small wicket gate. This way is difficult and can be dangerous to travel. Evangelist warns that other apparently safer paths go in the same direction for a time, but this narrow way is the only true path to the celestial city. In Psalm 25, 4 and 5, David, a man after God's own heart, recognized that there is only one true path. And he prays a prayer for guidance revealing his trust in the Lord in a time of intense danger. It wasn't the first time he was in trouble, but here he waits on the Lord to keep him from falling from di into disgrace at the hands of his foes. I love this prayer. It says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Show me your ways. The psalmist wants to know God's ways, to be taught his path and to be led in his truth. He can't discern this way unless God show it. He cannot walk in God's truth unless God lead him. And even then, unless God continue to teach, he will never fully learn the lessons of his salvation. Therefore, he adds, Lead me in your truth and teach me. So he comes to God as the God of his salvation, asking to be taught your truth, meaning the true right path, the way of godliness. David's prayer was that God would lead him in this path, causing him to never stray from it so long as he lived. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. David knows that his salvation can only be obtained through God. Therefore, he is bound to pray for everything his salvation depends on. For example, light and guidance. David's hope shows a spirit of trust and humility, of loving obedience, confidence in the most intimate friendship, and the deepest reverence for our Creator. You know, moral, providential, and mental forms of guidance are all precious gifts from a gracious God to any of us that are teachable. There are the ways of man and the ways of God. There are the paths of sin and the paths of righteousness. There are his ways and there are my ways. His ways are truth. Mine ways are full of error. His ways, which are good in his eyes. My ways, which are good in my eyes. His ways lead to heaven. My ways will only lead to hell. Christopher Ashe, preacher and author, says 
The truth of the absolute need for holiness needs to be re-emphasized today. The life of discipleship is not a spectator sport. We do not simply watch Jesus walk the walk and think because Jesus did it, we don't need to. Discipleship is to walk in his ways, to walk the way he walks, to walk in the calling he, that we have, and to walk in love. There has never been or will be any greater blessing other than to walk in the way of the word. So how is your walk? Are you trusting God and that you can say that all areas of your life are brought under God's authority and direction? Boy, I have learned that if I run ahead of God, I experience anxiety and exhaustion and failure. Taking matters into our own hands can cause irreparable consequences. As we pray for God's guidance, when we pray, show me your way, we learn to be in expectation of the revelation because he is in charge of every detail of our life. Christian's journey in the Pilgrim's Progress represents all of our journey, should we choose. I, for one, put my trust in an all-knowing God, one whose timing is always perfect and who is constantly present through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit in my life. I pray that your life journey is taking you on the narrow path of unwavering trust in God. If you've wandered from your trust path, look to him and whisper, I trust you, Lord. Voicing your trust in him gives you greater awareness of his presence. And this simple act of faith will keep you walking along the straight path he has for you. Be blessed today as you look toward the light and journey closer to the celestial city.